Hello? You are welcome to Living Sea. We thank God who has been our stay and help on this radio program, Living Sea. We are sure that the Lord will bless your life and equip you in His words as you listen to us. Today's edition of Living Seed is again the summons of Jesus on the mount. The master desires to release the principles of the kingdom life, but only to committed Christians who have left the popular and would only hear and obey Jesus on every matter. As you listen to us today, note very carefully that Jesus will not speak carelessly. I will advise you, therefore, to listen diligently and prayerfully that the Lord will impact your life. Let me intimate you of our discipleship by corresponding program. If you desire to enroll, write in today for the enrollment form. Our address is Living Seed, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Living Seed, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. I have this pleasure to introduce our Bible teacher, Brother Bile Akoni, to take over this program. Brother Bile. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you for your presence with us today again. We thank you for the opportunity we have to look into your word, the living oracles. We realize that this word they are the things that will build up our lives. That the principles that will establish us are upon a rock against all the winds, all the storms, all the rains of life. Father, as we look into this world again, the perfect law of liberty, let it set us free. Let it mix with faith within us. Let it push us forward in the purposes of God. Thank you for hearing us, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to bless God for this opportunity once again to come your way on this program, Living Seed. We believe that God is bringing us in contact with you from week to week for a purpose, in order to prepare you for the kingdom and in order to establish the purposes of God in your life. Uh, today, just as our brother had reminded you, we started the series on the Sermon on the Mount. And we would like to continue there. And our text again shall be from that scripture, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to read from verse 1. Matthew 5 from verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. I'd like to stop there. May God bless his word to our hearts, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, as we introduced this particular series of the Sermon on the Mount, I began to draw your attention to the fact that even though Jesus responded to the needs of people by casting out their devils, by healing their sicknesses and their diseases, that was not the end for Jesus. That was not his, his, perf his perfect program for all men that he met. Actually, he desires to bring men to himself. He desires to lend us the principles of the kingdom. What will make our lives established, what will make our lives fully fulfilled, and what will put us on course as far as God's will 
for our lives uh, is concerned. We saw that um, Jesus opened his mouth and told them, say, and I drew your attention to the fact that Jesus Christ, at the end of this particular sermon, and I regard it as my duty every time as I go on on this series to keep reminding you why are we studying this series? Why are we studying the Sermon on the Mount? It is because Jesus said, Whosoever shall hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man who has built his house upon a rock. The, the rain descended, the storms came, and the wind blew, but the house stood because it was founded on a rock. I realize that there are certain inevitables in this world. The rains of troubles, the rains and the floods, and the storms, and the winds of life that will normally blow any man in this world system. Yet the Bible said, if you will build your life on the principles or on the sayings of the Master Jesus, you will stand the test of time. The rain may come, the flood may come, the wind may blow, the storm may blow, yet your life will still be standing because it is built upon the principles of the word of God, even the principles of the kingdom. And so today, I'd like to now start examining what are these principles of the kingdom? What are these issues that Jesus Christ was talking about? And I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will help us and grant us speed as we go on in this series in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, from the passage we have read, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 5 from verse 1 to 12, I will endeavor to begin to look at the various aspects. Wherever we can stop, we will continue as the Lord leads us. The Bible said, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, now, the first comment I want to draw to you is this. That important and eternal things, serious things, principles of life, principles of victory, principles of, of prosperity, principles of righteousness, principles that will turn your lives around, the master normally wouldn't share it among dogs. If God must begin to become to be intimate with your life, if God must begin to reveal the secret of his purposes to you, you must do what the disciples did. The Bible said, when he saw the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And just briefly, I would like to remind you that everybody that God dealt with, Everybody that God spoke important things unto in their lives, He never spoke to them in the valley. He never spoke to them in the midst of the crowd. He never spoke to them in the midst of the multitude. He never spoke to them at the low level of convenience, at the low level of compromise. And so my friend today, if God must begin to speak to you, you must be ready to draw away from the crowd. Draw away from the level of present pleasure of life that does not allow your spiritual life to be sharp and to be sensitive unto what God wanted to pass across to your life. Every time the Lord Jesus wants to say something serious or wants to reveal something important unto his disciples, he takes them away from the multitude. He either takes them away to a solitary place or he takes them to a mountain. Now look at this. When Jesus was to call the twelve disciples, in Mark chapter 3, the Bible said, And he went up to a mountain, and he sat down, and he called unto himself those whom he would, and they came up to the mountain with him. My friend, just before we begin to look at these issues, there are issues that Jesus only will share on the mountain. He wouldn't share them in the valley. He wouldn't share them on the, on the low level where everybody is sitting, those that are not serious, it will not come to you accidentally. The truth that changes a man's life, the truth that patterns a man's life and ministry, the truth that establishes a man's life, they don't come to him in the low level. 
They don't come to him in the midst of the crowd. They don't come to him in the midst of the multitude. If God must begin to be serious with your life, I want to challenge you this day. Draw a little out of the crowd. Draw a little from among your friends. Draw away and come up to the mount and be there for God to speak unto you. Just a little on this aspect because I see it so very, very crucial. When the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to show himself again unto his disciples, right on the Mount of Transfiguration, if you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 17, you will see something there. The Bible said, And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his women was white as the light. So again we saw, for a transfiguration experience, for a transformation experience, for a deeper knowledge of the Savior, for a deeper experience and encounter with God, you cannot afford just to be on the ordinary level with everybody. There is a need for you to step onto a higher ground. There is a need for you to step out of the multitude, out of the crowd of mediocres, out of the crowd of men and women that are easily distracted with every noise that is going around them. The Lord Jesus Christ went to the mount. In order to say something serious, he went to the mount and he was waiting for those who will come up to him. Even today, I want to say to you, these messages we are bringing unto you, they are messages from the mount. They are messages from the mount. The master is not coming down to lower the standard. He's not coming down to the level of human thinking. He's not coming down to the level of human consideration. He's not coming down to the level of human compromise. He is sitting down there and those of you that want to experience the power of God in your life, those of you that seriously want to experience the life of the kingdom, those of you that know that Jesus, he set in his ways. Look, the Bible said, when he was set, that touched my mind so much. The master is set in his own ways. He is set in his ideas. He is set in his principles. He is not going to change it. He is not going to wave it aside. He had been like that since the beginning. And he will not change. And let me say to you, not because of you, not because of this present generation, not because of this present things that goes on around us in various churches and groups and fellowships where the principles of the word of God are thrown overboard. And people and pick little, little issues of convenience for their lives. Not in this generation will my master come down from the mountain to lower the truth, to lower the word of God, to lower the principles. Those of you that sincerely and in the depth of your heart, you really, really want to know Jesus. You want to walk with him. You want to follow him to the kingdom. You want to follow him to heaven. You want to touch the reality of his power. You must step out of the crowd. You must come up to the mount. Now, when God was going to manifest himself unto Moses, it was on the mount, on Mount Oreb. If you turn your Bibles very quickly to the book of Exodus chapter 3, you will see how Moses encountered God in that particular place. Uh, Exodus chapter 3. I want you to see that quickly before I, I press on. The Bible said, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the prince of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Oreb. It is on the mount that we meet the Lord. It is on the mount that a real encounter that will change your life, that will put you on top of your problems, will come to your life. It is not in the valley there. It is not in the midst of the crying, crying people there. It is not in the midst of the miracle seekers who are just looking for little, little things to catch and go away. We are not talking about such persons. The sermon you are about to listen to, the teachings that God is about to expose to us, they are for serious minded people. They are for those who want to come up on the mount with the master. They are for those who are saying, yes, no matter how tedious, I will climb up to meet him. I will climb up to stay where he is. On the higher ground is my prayer. On the higher ground is my desire. Others may dwell where fears and doubts arise. That hymn writer says, and I want you to see what the hymn writer says. The man that wrote uh, the higher ground, 
Look at what he said. He said, I'm pressing on on the upward A. New heights I'm gaining every day. And I'm still praying as I am onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where this abound, my prayer, my aim, my desire is the higher ground. I want to live above the world. Though Satan's that at me are hold, for faith has called the joyful son the sons of saints on higher ground. My friend, the Bible says, from the Matthew chapter 5 that we were reading, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. May I say to you, his disciples came to him. And his disciples came to him. What will be your first decision today? Are you desiring that the standard of Jesus, you will come to him there? Or you are waiting among the multitude? You are waiting among the crowd until he will come down? Until he will lower his standard? Until we come and just compromise? So many people, I believe you are deceived. I believe you are confused. You just imagine that the things that God is talking about, the things that Jesus is insisting about, that he is not serious about it. That one of these days he will come down. But I like to inform you, he will not. He never came down in the days of Noah. There was a standard of righteousness that God was looking for. That men could not fit into except eight people in the days of Noah. There was a standard of righteousness God was looking for in Sodom and Gomorrah that those people could not fit into except Lot and his two daughters. Even Mrs. Lot, Lot's wife, couldn't meet that standard and she became a pillar of salt. She died in between the way. My friend, I want to ask you, what is your feeling? The principles we are sharing here, the truth that God is about revealing to us here. There are principles for men that want to climb up onto higher ground. Men that are not satisfied with this low level experience. Men that are not satisfied with what others are doing here and there. I said, those some may dwell. Where this abound. Where fears abound. Where doubts abound. Where compromise abound. Where sin abound. Where carelessness abound. But what is your desire? What is your aim? And the disciples came to him. Sincerely, if you are a disciple today, if sincerely you want to work with God, if sincerely you want to experience the power of God, if sincerely you want to enjoy the things of the kingdom, you will step out of this compromise. You will come up to the mountain with him. When it was time for God to reveal to Moses the, the pattern of, of, of the tabernacles in those days, what did God say to him? In Exodus chapter 24 verse 12, he said, Come out to the mount and be there. Come out to the mount and be there. Spiritual principles are never shared in the midst of the valley. And I want to suggest to you this hour that you bow your heart and say, God, that mountain experience, I must have it. That mountain experience, I must climb up with you. Now the Bible said, now the Bible said, and seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying again just before i leave these two bible verses the bible said his disciples came to him i would like to say that we are the one to come to him we are the one who will go up unto him in all things we are the one to adjust our lives we are the one to make our decisions he is not going to change he was set the bible said and when he was set the master is set. The principles we are about to listen to in this series, the master is set about them. He is not just thinking. He is not just struggling to arrange them. He was set. He was certain about them. He was serious about them. When the disciples saw that he was set, when they saw that this man is sitting down, when they saw that this man is not likely to come down, the disciples took the, the wise decision. What was that decision? They came up to him. May God help you to take a decision this hour. To step out to come unto Jesus. To come unto him in such a manner that his word can come unto your life. Now I would like to introduce you very briefly to verse 3. I'm trusting God that as I come on this again, I will now start looking at those principles one by one with you. One by one with you. But I like to say, you see, verse 2 says, 
when he was set, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth. It was when they came that he began to speak. Some people think that God just speaks carelessly. No, the Lord speaks only to those that care. The Lord speaks to those that have shown interest. Before he opened his mouth to talk to anybody, he must notice, he must be sure that they are willing to listen. Now the same thing that will not allow us going on to, to analyze these principles today is what I want you to deal with in your life. We are not just talking of theoretical analysis of the Bible. I am designing that God will open his mouth and begin to speak to you. I am designing that the Holy Spirit will open his mouth and begin to speak to you. I want you to hear God mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth in your heart. But there is this condition. You must come up to him in the mountain. It is when they came to him that he opened his mouth and taught them saying, Jesus was not shouting on top of the mount and the others are in the valley and the others say, Oh, my disciple. Oh, my disciple, I have something Tana to say to you. No. No, God doesn't have to shout his principles before you come to hear it. It was when they came that he opened his mouth. And I want you to see that it's a principle. It is not just an accident in this case. If you go back to that Exodus that I referred you to before, look at Exodus and chapter, chapter 3. I want you to quickly check Exodus chapter 3 now. And the Bible said, the Bible said, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, appeared to Moses in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Please look at that scripture very well. When Moses said in verse 3, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. You will notice that verse 4 now says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him. You see, God only talks to men who cares. God doesn't release eternal principles to men carelessly. God doesn't speak. He doesn't open his mouth to say serious things until you are willing to listen. And I want to call, I mean, I want to ask you right now. Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to draw close to God? Are you willing to come to the mountain where God can speak to your life? Are you willing to step out of the crowd and say, Lord, whatever this message will cost, whatever is the truth, I am willing to hear it. I have turned aside from my friends. I have turned aside from my compromisers. I have turned aside from my boyfriend, my girlfriends. I have turned aside from those lies we occupied ourselves with. I want to hear you speak. Open your mouth, Lord Jesus, and begin to speak to me. When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside, that was when God began to speak to him. If you can quickly go to chapter 24 of Exodus, you will see something there. Exodus and uh, chapter 24. I want you to see something there before I draw the conclusion for today. The Bible says, In verse 12, And the Lord said to Moses, Come up unto me into the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law and commandment which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said to the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. Now if you look at verse 16, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered these six days. And on the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. What is that? You see, God said, Come up to me. Moses had to turn aside from his wife, from his elders, from his brothers, from his sisters, from his relatives. He left Aaron, he left Miriam, he left his children, he left Sipporah to come and go and be with God. And six days, God was just watching whether he will go back. Before the Lord began to speak seriously to him. My friend, before we close here. It was when the disciples came up to meet the master on the mount. When they realized that the master was set and he would not change his mind, that he began to speak to them. 
right now as I draw this uh, message to a conclusion, I want to ask you. I want to ask you, do you want God to speak to you? Do you want the secrets of the kingdom to be revealed to you? Do you want the word of God to come to your life? Mount to mouth and not open up your say. Then you must take a decision right now. You must take a decision because God talks to men who cares. Whosoever you are, wherever you are, if in your heart you want God to begin to deal with you, turn away from all those pleasures that are worrying you. Turn away from all your compromising friends. Turn away from all those that are disturbing your heart. Turn away from those that are deceiving you. And say, Lord, whatever your truth will cost me, I'm willing to listen. I will turn aside and see what God wants to say to me. And God will speak to you even today. God bless you. Our Father, we thank you again for this blessed time. Thank you, O Lord, for calling us out of our crowds, out of our conveniences. Lord, we know that your voice is precious and so many are turning to you now. I want to ask, O God, that you draw them unto you and speak to their ears and strengthen them henceforth. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Your decision today is important if you will find a condition for your life. Have you decided henceforth to come up to him in the mountain? The standard of God, which I already said, climb out of your convenience and that of the crowd. God will speak to you for your strengthening and blessing. Do please remember our discipleship by corresponding program right in today for the enrollment form as the Lord will bless you. Our address is Living Seed, Pure Box 971 Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Living Seed, Pure Box 971 Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Let's meet at the same time next week. God bless you. Before the Lord began to speak seriously to him, my friend, before we close here, it was when the disciples came up to meet the master on the mount. When they realized that the master was set and he would not change his mind, that he began to speak to them. Right now, as I draw this uh, message to a conclusion, I want to ask you. I want to ask you, do you want God to speak to you? Do you want the secrets of the kingdom to be revealed to you? Do you want the word of God to come to your life? Mount to mouth and not open up your say. Then you must take a decision right now. You must take a decision because God talks to men.